Hi everyone, I'm Victoria Main. Uh, I'm here with another episode of TV and Film Focus. Uh, we're here with our usual panelists, Brandon Cole, Keely Jelano, and Francis Hyde. And our special guest today, Melody Bayhan, Executive Director of the Minnesota Film and TV Board. Thank you, Melody, for taking the drive up. I'm happy to. I love coming to Duluth. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> um, so there's so much great stuff going on right now, but let's, let's just start real quick. Uh, tell folks a little bit about what the Minnesota Film and TV Board does uh, and what your role is in the state in terms of film. Great. Um, Minnesota Film and TV is um, our state's film commission. Um, so as such, what, what we're tasked with doing is marketing the state as a location, providing assistance to filmmakers in terms of finding crew, locations, that sort of thing, uh, permitting, anything that filmmakers need. Um, and then we also work with the state to administer the, the two statewide incentive programs. The rebate program, which we have had for decades, and our brand new tax credit program. Okay. Um, I'm glad you brought up the, the two state programs because, um, you know, we've, we've had on, on the show the folks talking about the, um, the other incentives, the county one uh, <clears throat> and, and the Iron Range uh, deal, but clarify for people a little bit what the state, the two state programs are about. Right. Um, well, the, the rebate program uh, was established in, I think, 1997 when um, this was after Canada had introdu introduced the first film incentives and production in the United States just hemorrhaged. Um, everything was going to Canada. So U.S. states then, in response, started creating incentive programs and Minnesota created a rebate program. Other states created tax credit programs. So in the intervening years, incentives have now become baked into the budgeting process of a film and or a television show. Um, if you do not have a strong and competitive incentive in your jurisdiction, you will not get production. It just, it's not gonna happen for the most part. So Minnesota created uh, the rebate program and it worked okay um, until it didn't. <laughs> um, and it still works great for certain things. Um, really low budget uh, feature films, uh, commercials, post-production, um, sometimes a television episode. Uh, those things are great because it depends on a direct appropriation from the legislature. And the, the amount of the appropriation that they have been willing to do has decreased over the years. So we are currently at 500,000 per fiscal year for that program. And that's just the rebate program. That's just the okay. rebate program. Okay. And if you know anything about um, film budgets, 500,000 goes really fast. Um, sure. And so we generally run, it, we, we get an appropriation for two years because we budget on the biennium. Yep. So that two year appropriation is generally gone halfway through the first year of the, fis the, the biennium. Okay. Um, so then when I, when I became executive director, of Minnesota Film and TV, it was clear to me that we needed a tax credit if we were going to be competitive with the rest of the industry, with the, the rest of the states. Can um, you explain the difference between a tax credit program and a rebate yeah. program? Absolutely. Oh my gosh, this is, <laughs> yeah, you may have to just cut me off because I do tend to go on about this. You look this. so happy right now. I, I am so happy about this. So a rebate is exactly what it sounds like. Um, a film comes in, they uh, apply, they get certified based on their budget and what they're doing and all of that, the expenses that would qualify. They do their film or television or whatever they're doing. Um, when they are done, wrapped, everything's done, they turn in all of their paperwork, their receipts, we go through everything 
to make sure that what they're claiming they spent, they did actually spend, and that it was qualified. And these are all Minnesota expenses. These are not, you know, payments to out of state things. So once we audit that internally, then they get a check. That's a rebate. They get a rebate for up to 25% okay. of the qualified expenses. So because they're getting a check, that is why the legislature has to make a direct appropriation because funds need to be allocated sure. by the state to write these checks to cover these expenses, okay. to rebate these expenses. I do have a question on that. Yeah. So like for the county uh, incentive specifically, you know, they, they spend the money in St. Louis County. Say they hire someone like me who lives in St. Louis County as their assistant director, their production manager, whatever. Um, how does that work for like if they want to pull crew from the cities, like bring say, you know, sound guys, PAs, that from the cities um, who don't have an address in St. Louis County, do they still get some sort of incentive for that or no? On the state or the county? On the county incentive. Um, I don't believe they do, no. Okay, so it's all it's, it's only, local it's to the county. Most, almost all incentives are, they will only incentivize expenses within, within their the jurisdiction. I, I wanted to ask that because I've been getting a lot of questions from other Minnesota filmmakers um, that live in other parts of like, hey, am I sure. eligible for this? And I had to go back and say, I don't know, so. Um, no, no. But so they are not. in eligible for the state absolutely okay so absolutely. they would get the state right. portion Any, of it. if you're a minnesota mm -hmm. resident doesn't matter what county you live in okay well now i know what to tell them yes yes but yes. they have to be a minnesota scarlett johansson if she comes to minnesota is not going to get well <laughs> that's where it gets complicated because then you're talking about and we could go way deep into the weeds <laughs> here uh some above the line uh exceptions or qualifications but we're going to leave that aside for a moment because now I'm going to tell you, princess, come on. <laughs> so then you have um, the other type of incentive is a tax credit. And what a tax credit is, is the state doesn't appropriate any funds. No one gets a check. No, no one walks away with any cash from this. A project comes in, they apply. They get certified under, you know, all the same conditions. Um, and then they do their project. They submit their stuff for an audit. They get audited. And then the state issues to them a certificate, which they can use. It's a credit, a tax credit certificate that they can then use on their Minnesota state tax liability in the future over the next five years so in our case in minnesota we our tax credit is transferable which means that if it's hbo and they don't have a minnesota state tax liability because they don't have a brick and mortar business here they can sell that transfer that credit to a minnesota-based company that can then use that tax credit for their own business. So it's good for the industry, it's good for local corporations, it's bipartisan, it's, I, I love tax credits. Everybody wins. <laughs> um, so that's the big difference. One, you get a check. The other, you get a credit on future tax liability. And well, there are other differences within that, but I'll stop there because... <laughs> well, that brought me to a question. Yeah. So if HBO shoots a film here and they, mm -hmm. and they, did, they go the tax credit route, mm -hmm. <clears throat> can they hold that tax credit then? Like if they say, well, can we shoot a movie here in two years? And you say, yes. Can they use the tax credit then? Like, is it... How long does it last? Or is it, is it that fiscal year? It, it <clears throat> has to be used for that, the next... I think it's four or five years taxes. So okay, but but so they kind of have a window. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think HBO and, probably isn't going to have a Minnesota tax liability, right. so they'll still continue to sell. So yeah. their next production, 
they'll sell that to somebody else. Just out of curiosity, is the sale dollar for dollar? No, do, do, no. So there is sort of like a, any. I it, it, this brokers. is something a lot of people don't <laughs> don't realize that <laughs> there is a huge uh, industry just in the buying and selling of tax credits in different areas. There is the industry for. Uh, film and television production tax credits. There's an industry for historic tax credits, for low-income housing tax credits. All of these things are bought and sold. So mm. this is not this is not anything unique to our industry. Um, this is just a, a tool that we use. It's business. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm Joe Blow. Yes. Who's paying Minnesota state taxes. Yes. I haven't gone to a movie in 10 years. What, what, how is this good for me? Why, why, why does the Minnesota legislature want to do this? Because of the spending that is coming into the state because of the tax credit. This is what's referred to as but for. They, HBO would not come here to shoot their movie but for the tax credit. So while they might get a credit on Minnesota expenditures of $4 million, say it's a small project. So they're spending $4 million that's qualified in the state. They're actually probably spending $7 million in the state. Um, so it, there is a multiplier effect also. So you're paying Minnesota workers who are then paying taxes, um, who are buying groceries and buying, paying their mortgage and Going buying gas, everything. I was yeah. gonna say, so that's my understanding is that it, it, it feeds into the local industry. It puts uh, money in the local uh, filmmakers that are here, the local crew that's here. It mm -hmm. puts money into the local hotels, restaurants, um, catering. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it just, it, adds, it creates revenue for um, the area that you film in. Absolutely, and not to mention the, the taxes, because a tax credit doesn't mean that they're not paying taxes. Right. They're paying every tax that they have to pay yep. on wages, goods, services, when they make their films. So that's going straight into the state coffers. Mm -hmm. And they, they're getting us, you know, some percentage of that, you know, back in that credit form, but but they've, they've, they've already spent it. They've the already money. spent it, okay. right, right. And they nobody gets a rebate or a credit unless they have already spent their money and we have verified that they've spent that money. So, okay, um, and this Brandon kind of gave me this question, but I mm -hmm. want to talk a little bit about the stackability of what we have going in Minnesota now mm -hmm. because we've got state, we've got... Uh, County, the Iron Range also has their own incentive, I believe. Yes. And then I believe Duluth is going to do something on the city level. That's I understand. what I hear. Yeah. yeah. So that's very exciting. So my understanding is these are all stackable. Like if, if you're shooting in St. Louis County, you can stack all those babies on top of each other. Well, you can stack one of the state programs. You can't you can't use both the rebate and the right. tax credit. On the state but, side, you got to pick one. Yeah, you got to okay. do one or the other. Um, but then you can certainly stack those regional or city incentives on top of the state incentive. The difference is that the state incentive is going to cover things that the St. Louis County is not, as Brandon asked about wages. Mm -hmm. St. Louis County isn't going to incentivize the wages of Twin Cities workers right. that right. are brought so, up. So I've got a kind of a piggyback question on the stackability because there's another rumor that I've been hearing and I don't know exactly where it is and you can just tell me if it exists or not. I hear that there's a sweet spot where you can take one of the state incentives, the St. Louis County, and then the Iron Range. I, there's like a geographical sweet spot where you could theoretically stack all three of those. Does I that exist? I believe that does exist. I know it's a very small area. It is a very but... small area <laughs> and and what what would qualify in that area is uncertain is yeah i mean you might be able to hire a couple of people there to work in an office or you know if there there might be some some lodges or hotels whatever restaurants are but but 
I don't know. Sherry would right. Up I just, I just ask because there's, right there's. I've, I've been talking to a couple of local filmmakers that have been, mm -hmm. you know, saying that they hear that there's this rumor of this sweet spot, and they want to go buy land or buy property <laughs> on that sweet spot. So um, wow. I just wanted to ask you a question about that, just to clarify for all the local filmmakers out there listening, so you kind of know exactly what's up with that. And yeah. it sounds very uncertain at this point. Well, it's not uncertain. It does exist. Right. Um, you know, it's not like uh, Bigfoot. The, right. it, it, it is it's, actually it's there. a real thing, um, but I, on your GPS. Yes, yes, <laughs> but I'm not sure. You know, I don't have. It, if I exactly have a map, what I would could, qualify. Yeah, I could show you, but but the expenses would have to originate in that in that one geographical, geographical area. area. So yeah. you'd be very. You'd be very hard pressed to find all the hotels, all the restaurants, right. all the crew with living within that geographical area. So while you could theoretically stack that, mm -hmm. you're gonna have to branch out to some of the things where you might have to stack down to get some of the more resources, the wider resources that you need. Exactly. That's yes. That, that's perfect. I think that's what everybody wanted to know that they keep asking me, and again, I didn't have answers for yeah. them. So. Yeah. But I have you to clear some of this stuff up. Of course. That's why she's here. That's why I'm here. <laughs> it's called oh. the Minnesota Film Pride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, great. so okay. So let's <laughs> let's talk a little bit about where Minnesota is going now. What's happening now? The industry is starting to notice us uh, in a in a much bigger way. At least mm -hmm. certainly the northern half of the state uh, more than previously. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me where we're going. Well. Um, the tax credit that passed, and let me back up here. The reason for me, the the thing that makes the tax credit so important to me is that I want a television series in Minnesota. I want an episodic Amen. because that is that's the kind of thing that is basically year round steady employment, a constant influx of funds into the state. Um, there is no television series that I'm aware of that's shot in a jurisdiction that doesn't have a tax credit because rebate programs like ours get funded at different levels or they go away. Um, a tax credit is generally set for a longer period and it is a, a certain program. And no television series wants to go someplace um, where they don't know that they can stay more than a couple of years um, because they're, you know, they go in optimistic. You think they think, you know, we're going to run for five years or seven years. And so they're looking for stability. Sure. Tax credits generally offer that. But in our case, um, the tax credit that the legislature passed is not the tax credit that we would like to have. Um, I think it, it was a great first step, um, but we need to prove the industry. We need to prove that the tax credit's gonna do what we said it would do, which was to draw new money into the state. Um, because what they passed is, it's frankly, it's the smallest tax credit program in the country right now. Um, it is only five million dollars in credits per year. Total. Total. Five million per year, which is better than nothing, but it is not where I'd like us to be ultimately. But it's a good starting point. The problem right now is that this tax credit program expires in four years. And that is not long enough for us okay. to go after to attract that series and episodic what we can do and what we are looking at and talking to folks about is you know because production and the industry and streaming has changed so much an anthology series would be a perfect thing for our program because it is something that changes locations, changes cast, change, you know. So if we could get a one year anthology, that would be great. And we'll, we're certainly working, you know, to talk to industry folks and pitch Minnesota as hard as we can. Um, but our goal is to prove that this works, bring some work in, 
get some people jobs, get some money into the state, go back to the legislature and show them the numbers because we are collecting the numbers on sure. everything um, and say, this program works and can only get better if you increase the amount of tax credits that are available and if you extend it for so 10 the, years. So the legislature doesn't accept the wild successes of Georgia and New Mexico? Well, that's not Minnesota. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I, frankly, I, I have to say it was, for some folks, it was very disappointing that we didn't get, you know, $25 million in credits with no sunset. Um, but you know what? Minnesota couldn't handle $25 million in credits right now. We do not have the crew to handle that many multiple productions at one time. So starting small gives us the opportunity to do what y'all are doing up here so great, which is, you know, trying to build up your workforce and get people trained. And, you know, we need to do that down in, in the Twin Cities. We need to do that all over the state. Um, because having the credits are great, but, if a production has to bring in all their crew, the, the credit means nothing because they can't use it. So currently the credit is set for four years, did you say? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and what would be, a, would it, you know, is seven years, uh, 10 years, what's uh, sunset? Well, never. What, it, what has happened in other states that have uh, passed tax credits, that have tax credits is Many of them have started small, like ours, with a you know a five-year sunset, and invariably the legislature has gone back a couple of years into the program and increased the tax credit amount and either extended or abolished the sunset altogether. So when we started this, what I was hoping for. I, ideally, you want no sunset at sure. all. I don't think Minnesota legislature would go for that. Um, you know, they they want guardrails, which is totally fair. Uh, I think if we could go back and get a 10-year sunset, that would give us the room that we need to market the state as a location for episodic. To go after those series. Absolutely. Because it's it, the Minnesota Film Board you, your job is twofold. I mean, you both have to deal with the legislative side, um, the public affairs kind of lobbying side, but you also literally have to attract the projects. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So you'd love to be attracting those projects. I would. I would. Um, and, you know, a, a longer sunset would give us a little breathing room. Um, you know, sure. it's, it, we're certainly doing everything and have been doing everything that we could since the governor signed this law in July, you know, we were uh, on the phone immediately to folks in LA that we have relationships with, uh, to the many, many, many producers that have called our office over the last couple of years, looking at Minnesota as a possible location until they heard about our incentive program. Um, but calling them and saying, hey, we've got what you need now, consider us. And in fact, we've got a, a feature film that starts production at the end of this month uh, that is one of those situations where this producer called our office a couple of years ago with this project. Um, we didn't have the enough incentive for them with the rebate. Um, so she was on our list of people. I called her back and she's like, oh, perfect timing because <laughs> we haven't made this film yet, but we're about to start budgeting and we continue talking. They applied for the tax credit. They got it. They start shooting the end of this month. Yes. Wow. So, I mean, that's what, that's where we're at right now is just trying to talk to everybody we can and, and get these projects in. So how are, how are the folks, um, in the, you know, film and TV world, are they starting to, are you start, are those calls ramping up to you? Are oh, people gosh. starting to, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, the, the thing to know is that the studios, everybody watches what happens, um, in 
with incentives. There are there are companies whose job is to you know follow incentive programs. Right. And, uh, the big payroll companies, um, entertainment partners, and um, cast and crew, they, if you go to their websites, they have maps that lay out who's got what incentive and how much it is and what the rules are. It is so important. So as soon as ours passed, the big payroll companies called us and got our information out there to the rest of the industry, all of their clients. Um, it it is known. Um, so yeah, the calls have ramped up and just as importantly, we get return phone calls from people that we would never have gotten return phone calls from before. <laughs> nice. So people are at least willing to talk um, where before, you know, you might have a, a project that would be perfect for Minnesota, but they wouldn't even talk to us yeah. because we just didn't have enough incentive sure so um what do you think is is a is a great next step from it i mean I, obviously on the you know you're you've covered what you think about the tax incentive and the or the tax credit and the incentive uh the rebate what about like where do you see like studio production facilities where does all that stuff fit in with all this well i think the the important thing is what we touched on before and that's the workforce um, that is key, um, and, and that's, I think, where we need to put our focus. Okay. Um, at this point, uh, I think it would be great to build up to the kind of private investment that would come in and build a studio, but that's not going to happen until we have a workforce that can support multiple projects. Um, and that is what happened with Georgia. Um, you can look at their trajectory. They started, when they passed their tax credit, they, their industry was about like ours um, in terms of size. But once they started proving themselves and getting more productions and um, you know, increasing their tax credit, the private investment then followed. Um, so I think right now we focus on workforce okay. and getting people trained and experienced and work on uh, and, and get projects here that people can get some real life experience on. Okay. Um, so we've got about two minutes left. Uh, very fast half hour. Um, yeah. So just tell us, what, what can we do, um, how can we assist you in this process? What, what would you like uh, the creative community to do to help you? Oh my gosh, wow. Um, well, I, you know, it's very hard for me to, to come up here to the north and tell you all to do anything because you all are doing so much great stuff already. Um, you know, the work that the Upper Midwest Film Office is doing is fantastic. The, with Catalyst coming in a couple of years ago, it has just, exploded here and the recent announcement about all of the the festivals kind of coming together at the same time yep. is so exciting so um you know do everybody up here do whatever you can to help support the upper midwest film office in s particularly in their their training efforts um i i again i just think that's so important but support the work they're doing, um, support increasing funding for your regional incentive, um, oh, yeah. because those funds go really fast. I mean, you're seeing, you're seeing productions uh, happening up here, yeah. um, and, and that's only gonna increase, so. Yeah. So what's your final thought to the folks at home, real quick? Anything <gasps> that we've missed? Oh my gosh. You have 45 seconds. Oh, <laughs> pressure, pressure, pressure. Um, I, uh, I uh, it's, it's all great. Minnesota State it, Legislature. It's all great news. Yeah. Um, it, film here. Film here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, uh, continue to talk to your legislators about the importance and the difference that it's making up here in the North, particularly what you're seeing with the, the films that are shooting up here or the projects that are shooting up here. 
Um, we are well on our way to rebuilding Minnesota's in industry. Um, we have a ways to go, but we, I think we're on the right path. Well, thank you. That's, I couldn't have asked for a better wrap-up than that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Melody Bahan. Uh, we'll see you next time on TV and Film Focus.